Can't go. This is really steep here, and it's packed snow. Put it on like that. We'll pull the sock over like this. Hey guys, welcome to Cybertruck One. Um, this video is going to be about why I think owning, in this particular case with my particular setup, why uh, getting away with all-wheel drive and just um, conventional all-season tires uh, is more than sufficient. I'm here in Boulder, Colorado. I'm actually here in El Dorado Canyon at the moment, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to show you the science behind it and I'm also going to show you the physicality of doing some testing and using the things I have and what I'm ultimately going to be doing is using the car 99% of the time the vehicle is going to be perfectly fine your day-to-day -day driving in snow on ice on blacktop um, most of the time you don't really need winter tires getting through snow is essentially three things one is traction okay and that is, of course can be done by the having the proper tires two is clearance right the vehicle has to be higher um, off the ground so that you can get over things or if the snow is getting deeper you can um, you can get over top of it uh, third is your basically your balance of weight uh, but anyway one thing people don't understand and I want to show this chart here um, is how much better all-wheel drive is versus versus rear-wheel drive or front-wheel drive and we can look at this graph here and this will explain it, this is everything you need to know as to why you can save yourself thousands of thousands of dollars without buying another set of wheels and another set of tires for winter and then also pay to have those either stored and taken on and off uh, every season all right let's get into it okay so here we go the chart I'm going to be sharing with you I borrowed from engineering explained this guy's name is jason he has a, an amazing website he's a brilliant guy please subscribe i will attach a link to his video below he goes over the entire reasons for having um using snow tires and all-wheel drive and all this stuff but let's go right over to his chart and i'll explain okay so here's the chart i won't dig in it too deep I'll, as i said please watch his video but essentially you have two sides of this chart on top we have summer tires all season tires winter tires on the side we have rear wheel drive front wheel drive all wheel drive um, ultimately he cr creates this calculation where he um, the grip values for each of the tires and ultimately comes up with a grade of which it's capable of climbing okay so the higher the number the more capable uh, the setup is and so let's just go right to what I have. And this is my point with all wheel drive and all season tires, which again, mine are capable, uh, even though they're just all seasons, they have the mud and snow insignia on it. You know, basically I'm in the 24% uh, grade capability, which is fantastic. Um, you know, it should be noted that I-70, I think the steepest grade on the whole highway is about 8%, maybe 9 I think somewhere around there between 7 and 9 Anyway, what should be realized here is that, look around there on this chart, my car at 24% is better than a rear-wheel drive car with winter tires, is better than a four-wheel drive, excuse me, better than a front-wheel drive vehicle with winter tires the only thing that beats my car with all season all-wheel drive is winter tires on all-wheel drive and i'm suggesting that my car is so good for most case scenarios that for the one in a hundred for the time when the snow is just really really deep or the grades are really really uh steep or again it's the it's that one time out of 100 where you're not going to cut it with all-wheel drive and all season then you go to the socks and the socks are as i'm going to show you easy to apply they are cheap easy to remove now their own the only caveat the only achilles heel to these socks are that they shouldn't be driven on dry and bare roads i'm here to suggest that if the roads aren't covered completely then 
in all likelihood, the all-wheel drive all season is fine. It's only these extreme conditions where the snow is so deep and the grades are so steep that you're going to need this in the middle of a blizzard trying to get back from the mountains. Another YouTube site you should check out, um, and what I based on some of my studies here, is from Fast Lane Car. They also have a channel called Fast Lane Truck. Here they evaluated uh, the K&K &K snow socks on a vehicle. They went through everything from chains to to different types of straps to the socks. And here, let's look at the data that they finally came up with. You'll see this on their video and I'll attach, I'll have a link in the comments. But you look at here, winter tires, all season, two snow socks, four snow socks, tire chains. And then this first column is stopping distance. And I believe this second, second one is acceleration uh, time. I think they did a zero to, uh, it was either to, uh, to a speed of 50 or uh, I think to a specific uh, location. They had to get a certain distance in a certain period of time. Anyway, what has the, the shortest stopping distance and the, and the shortest uh, acceleration time? Four snow socks. Um, second best is two snow socks. Third best are winter tires. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and speaking of these auto socks, look here. This is the Colorado Department of Transportation list of approved products in regards to chains. And look here, Easy Sock, Super Sock, other chains, Easy Sock chain. Anyway, look here, K&K &K Auto Snow Socks. So not only have these things worked fantastically for me, as I've proven here in these tests, but it's also certified by the state of Colorado. And so if you're pulled over with these um, socks on under certain driving conditions, you won't get ticketed and you'll have a safe way of getting about around. So um, these are the socks, okay? Um, now, I have to admit, I thought I... <laughs> I'm an old school guy, chains, winter tires, I thought would be the only way and the only real way to get things done. But I am absolutely amazed by the capability of these things and they're cheap. Okay. So that's the other thing. Not only are they effective, very effective, they're light. Um, they're cheap. They can easily fit inside the bottom here so I can store them away. Um, and my God, even if they lasted five or six years, you would be, um, I could buy a new pair. So this is where the experiment will take place. This is my first shot going up the hill. I never stopped. We just, I had my momentum, I had my speed, and even with just all season tires and all wheel drive, I made it from top to bottom with no problems. Now stopping is another story. Okay, you're on? Yep. All right, so we're at about a 20 degree angle here. It gets worse, maybe 24 at the top of the hill. And we're going to, from a standstill, which is the worst place when you stop on a hill and try to start again, is without question the most difficult thing. Let's see, see if we can do it with just mud and snow tires, regular, all terrain, all, all weather, excuse me. Here it goes. Can't go. This is really steep here and it's packed snow. Now I've put on slip start. Let's see if we can start from the worst position ever on the hill. All right, since we're sort of stuck here because I started on the hill, obviously you could have done this before you got going up a steep hill. Like I said, it's 20, 24 degrees. Here's uh, you've already done the one side. We're gonna throw these on real quick, see how this goes. Slips on pretty easy. There's enough of a gap to get your hands in. All right, there you go. We're gonna either back up or move forward, whatever we can do, and get them put on the rest of the way. Is that good? Yep. 
All right, so it's hard to tell how, as I've said before, how really steep this is here. This is a pretty bit, uh, not worst case scenario, but pretty damn close. We were very easily able to put these on. We can, you can put one of these socks on each one in less than two minutes a piece. Uh, I also think it's good even for, uh, dare I say, if women have a hard time doing this, this is not difficult, it's not like chains. Now we're gonna back up. We're gonna put ourselves in that same position of being stuck and we're gonna see how we do. You can just let it flow again. I put all four on. The truth be said, you could just do two if you wanted to, but this is maximum track. All right, at a standstill, packed snow. It's really steep here. It's nothing. I, I'm pulling forward. I barely have my foot on the gas pedal. It's perfect. All right, we're further up the hill. This is definitely steeper than down below. I would say it's over 25 degrees, maybe 27. Uh, normally you wouldn't stop in the middle of a, of a hill like this, but we're testing these socks out to see if they're better than obviously what we were dealing with with just the, uh, the uh, all season tires. Here we go, it's in drive. I'm gonna put my foot on the gas. It, it, it's nothing. I could cruise around here, no problem. These socks are fantastic. All right, now we're just gonna uh, see how quickly we can take them off. Don't typically wanna drive on blacktop here, but we just got up to this flat area, stopped, and so here we go. Grab, pull. That's pretty easy. Super easy. All right. All right, guys. Well, that's basically it. Uh, like I said, between the uh, testing that I just showed you, those two YouTube videos, I think it's quite evident that I can get away with just my existing setup, which I said, all wheel drive with uh, uh, all weather tires that have the capability of mud and snow. Now, look, you live in the mountains and you're in the snow every day. Go get yourself some winter tires. Um, if you're a firefighter, a nurse, a doctor, someone that doesn't have, that may have to go to work at a moment's notice or not have the luxury of sp stopping and throwing on some uh, snow socks, maybe that's fine too. But I do think that this is a legitimate, um, for 95% for of the people out there, uh, just getting some regular good uh, weather tires, assuming you have all wheel drive, I think those socks can fill the gaps when a real emergency comes along and you find yourself on I-70 uh, in a big snowstorm. All right, well, thanks for joining Cybertruck One, and we'll see you at the next one.